I read empowered. Okay, so I know this video could be like eight videos because there's been so many things going on here recently that I really wanted to share with you. And I even got out my camera the other day and it wasn't recording for some reason. So I was just talking to the camera um, without you. So some of the things that I wanted to show you are already done, but I'm gonna go through, walk through some of the things that I wanted to show you. Good thing I wasn't too far in them before I noticed that it wasn't working. But um, we've just had a lot happening or things that I thought about after where I, we made this garden bed out in the planter strip, which I'm really excited to show you. Um, but I wish, you know, I didn't think about it until after where that would have been a really good thing to show you the process of. So um, I'm getting better and we're growing. So I just wanted to show you some of the stuff and things that are happening on the farm right now and projects that are upcoming, super exciting. Okay. Um, first, we picked one almost ripe raspberry the other day, but I'm going to show you the raspberries real quick. <laughs> Madness. We're going to have so many raspberries. And as long as you keep watering, they keep coming. Um, the grapes were looking sad for a little bit. Like there was something eating the leaves, but they are looking a lot more healthy again. This is the first sunflower I've ever grown this style and I just think it is so incredibly beautiful. Um, we have so many sunflowers coming and I don't even know if I planted sunflowers. These are just volunteer stuff. Okay, so one of the things I was trying to show you the other day is the garlic um, scapes. So we might find, oh, I did miss a scape. Okay, so here's our garlic scape. This is hard neck garlic. Um, and then you use scissors and you cut it at like a 45 degree angle right above the, um, the tallest leaf. So that helps it not get infection and stuff. Um, oh, and I missed a couple. There's another baby, baby, baby one in there. Oh, can't see it. Okay, so anyways, um, the first year we made pesto with these. They're just a mild garlic flavor. Um, I forgot what we did last year. Dakota did, like, put some on the dehydrator. Ooh, they're, like, dripping. They're so soft. Okay. Also, like, not look at these. Look at this blackberry. Um, flowers are just so beautiful. Um, this is blackberries. These are thornless blackberries, though. So, that'll be really nice. The raspberries aren't even thornless. Okay. So... I did clean out, sorry about all this craziness, um, I did clear out most of these like kale plants, I fed a lot to the chickens, and I'm letting these go to seed. So I want these seeds, I actually want them to reseed right where they're at. Um, I was leaving them for the bees, and now I'm like, man I want these seeds. So I am soaking that up. Um, this is the root veggies like I don't actually know what I'm gonna pull up which is kind of fun but that is like one of the healthiest looking spots we have I intermixed the peppers with the pumpkins peppers pumpkins which are starting to come up we've had a lot of rain the last while it looks like these last few pumpkins did not come up so I might have to replant those we are getting our first pepper flowers um this is like all volunteer squash, which we transplanted a bunch the other day. We do have a couple of flowers growing up here, but I'm not seeing the flowers growing in this bottom part. Um, that would be a lot of wasted flower seeds. So I'm hoping they're still coming. I, I got discouraged also about the if the um, rice was coming. And so I went ahead and put our... These are cranberries in here, this one and that one. Because I just, the cranberries were still in their little pot and I just didn't want them to go bad. Um, because they were starting to look a little bit sad. This is all volunteer, like, okay, so I did put these zinnias here, but these squashes, like, this is insane. Oh, oh no, I thought that was our first flower. Okay, so I'm just kind of letting this stuff grow. Um, this is our sweet potatoes. 
Um, look, look at this. This makes me so happy. Um, I've never grown corn before. So my daughter was like, why are the leaves crinkly? I'm like, that's how they grow. This is so exciting. This is the loofah. And I thought it was going to grow more like a corn stalk than like a squash because I'm seeing squash vines on here. So we're going to see. Um, tomorrow will be bee day again, which man, see, I tried to make a video of that, but it was too big. Something about the file wasn't transferring. And so I don't think that you're going to get that, um, information. It's been like pretty cold here the last few days. Um, rainy, a lot of rain. So, uh, I got the elderberries in the ground and yeah, one of these was looking pretty sad. And so, um, I was like, man, we just got to get them in the ground and they are looking, I mean, they're already looking more happy. And then one of these I transplanted from what I thought was dead last year. Um, this tomato, like. This is just volunteer. This stuff is insane. Um, our first, our beets are looking really sad, but look how, like the leaves look sad, but look how big those bulbs are getting. Like that's really exciting to me because I haven't grown successfully beets before. These sunflowers are going to be multi-head. Isn't that amazing? Um, okay, zinnias, super exciting. Look at all those colors. Um, I'm forgetting what that yellow one is back there. These are the carrots. Like, Oh, it's so cool to show you this because how much, you know, how many things last year I was discouraged that didn't grow. To grow them this year feels so rewarding. Um, okay, so many of these are like volunteer. That yellow flower you see in there is a um, tomatillo. All volunteers. Like I did not plant any of these. Um, I planted one raspberry here. Let's see if I can get better. And I've already, um, transplanted like six starts from right there. And I'm going to need to take more. Um, this is just insane. Oh, look at that borage. I didn't, oh my goodness. I didn't actually realize that borage, um, flowered multiple places. All the one, all the other ones I have are only flowering in one spot right now. Um, these are volunteer tomatoes. I moved a ton. They were all circling around this and I moved them. Um, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. There's, these are some squashes right here. These were all, um, transplanted though. So those ones I knew were going to be successful. Whereas, and then I'm letting the sunflowers grow because I think I told you that they were a good companion. So, um, they, you know, I look up some of this stuff and it says it's an invasive weed, you know, easily found on roadsides and whatever. And I just think, you know, it's feeding the bees and it's not in my way. So I'm just letting it go. Look at these onions. Like this is making me so happy. Um, I think it looks smaller on the, this is making me so happy. This is the first year I've grown onions. Like there's these things, these are the cucumbers. They're coming, they're doing good. They're trying. Um, God, this makes me so happy. Okay. I'm going to take you out to the front and show you, um, most of the stuff that I did out in this front garden is just transplanted because I was like, oh, what am I going to plant out here? Like, I didn't want to start things from seed. And so there was a bunch of volunteer stuff in the backyard that I was like, oh, I'll just move this out there because it's kind of in the path, but I didn't want to get rid of it. And so I'm just going to, I just put it out here, transplanted it. Um, so many volunteer pumpkins. Okay, some of this stuff still looks a little bit sad. Um, these are all pumpkins. We just like put them everywhere because there were so many, like they were going to have, they were going to die anyways. 
Some of this stuff looks sad because we just transplanted it and it's still in shock. So, like the sunflowers, I have hope they're still going to come back. Um, this is what happens for a couple days or a week. Some of them might die, but I do have hope some of them will come back. The pumpkins, the tomatoes, um, like I, I think they're still going to be okay. That tomato looks the best. But I just planted the pumpkins all around the edges so that they can grow out on the sides where there's just sad dirt anyways. But I think I am going to end up um, tilling some of this and um, just making it more community garden because I've been looking for spaces to grow more food and, you know, trying to see who's yard we could use or if people are interested in growing but they don't have enough time or energy or capacity whatever it is to grow that um you know we would volunteer to maintain their space if we could use their space so i'm going to show you all my first bleeding hearts my mom grew these when i was a kid and we used to eat them like lettuce it's kind of silly but um they still have a special place for, in my heart. Um, these, I thought these were one of Kennedy's um, flowers that she put up here. And then one day she's like, no, they're beets. Or not beets, sorry, radishes. Because the seed pods, because we had just looked up. So I have another one growing over here. I might actually need to take some of this stuff out. So that this can grow, because I want these... Um, these bleeding hearts on both sides. So here's my funny mistake. Um, I actually had that in upside down when I planted it. And so this one was growing and, uh, the other one wasn't. And I was wondering what the problem was. And so I finally dug it up and flipped it around and it still grew. It wasn't dead. Um, so that's encouraging, but also just kind of a funny fail, um, and encouragement to you that, like, <laughs> You can plant things upside down and it's not too late. It's not dead. Um, so I'm just working on keeping all these tomatoes, like all the plants really in there. Like as they grow, keeping them coming up and doing what they're supposed to. Um, kind of. We're going to pretend. Okay. Um, we've made a couple batches of mint tea, still working on it. Most of my basil died, but, um, the ones that are surviving are doing okay. Um, rosemary, these, this is so funny, like, I thought these were dead, but they've kind of, some of these have popped back. These are raspberries, um, and then some of these, oh, the tomatoes. These were some of the tomatoes that were pollinated before... I even put it in the ground. So we do have some tomatoes on there. There's a tomato on there. They just look more like thin and tall. Like last year mine were so bushy. Oh, but we have been picking peas. Look at that. Um, mm, okay. I usually don't, and then just trying to keep these going up. Um, I usually don't see any strawberries. Oh. Guess Kennedy gets to them. Okay, let's see here. I'm interested how long the peas will survive because I thought they were a cooler crop, but I hear that their roots like to be shaded, but their tops want sun. So, we're going to see. We're enjoying them. It's kind of, sometimes I feel like it's not actually a food source. It's more of a novelty with the benefit of being able to eat it. Um, but we're learning a lot and we really are growing food. And we'll be surprised, you know, even with... Like, one of the things we were talking about, oh, these are the good basil. Those are doing really well. 
Let my mom need to cut that. Mm. Some of these peas are. I don't want him to get away from us. And then that's my craziness over there. <laughs> Some beautiful flowers back there. Okay. So one of the things we were talking about with food, just to quote an idea the other day, was um, when things are in season. So, like when we have raspberries in season, I don't buy bananas. Or when we have whatever, like it just replaces something else. Like, I'm not growing bananas at my house, but we have enough fruit that I don't need to buy bananas. So when I am buying fruit, I'm just usually buying what's cheapest at the store. Um, oh, let me show you one more thing. These are the beans I'm so excited about. Um, because, oh, look at their leaves. They look like beans before they become flowers. It's so crazy. Um, so thinking about like, I buy the cheapest thing at the store but when um, when I have food here to replace it, like raspberries are way more expensive than bananas at the store. So when I grow raspberries, I'm replacing another fruit that I would be buying, um, but I'm actually getting more value out of the fruit that I am growing than even the fruit I would be buying. So anyways, just a fun, like, fun to see the garden grow, fun to see, um, you know what like I said it you know sometimes I feel like it's just novelty but really you add up like how much kale are we growing that you know it's a dollar 29 a bundle or whatever um, how many bundles of kale did we grow um, easily over 20 over 20 bundles or I mean I shouldn't even guess I'm not good at math okay but a lot okay so how much you know, rhubarb, how much is rhubarb at the store? And then to look at too, how much would it be to buy at the farmer's market, organic, and whatever extra things, labels that we could put on what we're, how we're growing our food. So, and like eggs, that's a simple one. Like how much value are we actually growing? And I don't want to get too caught up in that because I know like, that can take the fun out of it for me. At one time, I saw someone who, like, weighed how much she got from her garden. Um, I think that's really cool to have some kind of measurement. But then also, I feel like it takes a little bit of the joy out of it for me. Where I just want to do it because I love it and it's fun. And I don't want to feel like... I don't want to turn it into... Um, production? Because that's what our world does about everything, right? We look at numbers. We look at how many people showed up. But you're not measuring impact. You're measuring a number. And sometimes by m measuring a number, you take away the impact. Or you take away the um, that deep significance or meaning or value by trying to measure it in monetary or weight or whatever. Like, we're trying to find something measurable, but that's often taking the heart out of it. And so... I'm choosing in my garden in this season to just enjoy the fruit instead of trying to measure it and maybe taking away, most likely, I know myself well enough to know, it would take away that joy. So anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. I know this is quick and I want to show you more like as we do projects and I want to involve you in that, um, but things are growing and I just want to encourage you. Um, it's also not too late to start. There's so many things like um, a lot of the yellow squashes, zucchini, herbs. Um, there's a lot of things that are not too late to start. So, you know, seeing this, these flourishing plants and gardens like, um, you know, I have a neighbor who's like, well, I'll just wait until next season. I'm like, no, wait until fall. Like, you know, you want to grow beets. Fall is the season to grow beets anyways. Like, it's not too late. So start looking into what are some of those things that you could start. Uh, you'll start those like July. 
So that's not too far away because you'll start them in, in seed indoors and then be ready to put them out in the fall. So um, it's not too late to grow food for this year. Um, we still have a whole other, another season. Tomorrow's the first day of summer. And um, yes, there's a lot of things growing, but it's not too late. So look what you can grow, be encouraged, and we will talk to you next time.